Dear friends, welcome and uh, it is good that you are able to join together today for yet another opportunity to hear and reflect on Jesus' teaching. I hope that in the story we hear today, we will be able to recognize the story really is a story about our lives and it is a story that we are actually familiar with. But before we listen to the readings and the teachings of Jesus, let us take a moment of prayer. Let us pray. O oh God, whose blessed Son came into the world, that he might make us children of God and heirs of eternal life. Grant that having this hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah, chapter 1, verse 7 and verses 12 to 18. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice, he has consecrated his guests. At that time I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs. Those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath, in the fire of his passion. The whole earth shall be consumed for a full, a terrible end he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. This is the word of the Lord.
A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 25, verses 14 to 30. The Parable of the Talents For it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow, and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to the one with ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This, the Gospel of the Lord.
familiar story from the Gospel of today tells of a wealthy man who before living on a long journey entrusted some of his wealth to three servants. Five talents he gave to one, two talents to another, and one talent to the third, each according to his ability. On his return, both of the first servants had invested the talents given them, and each returned a profit and was rewarded by the master. The third, however, was afraid of losing the talent he had been given, so he hid it safely away and returned it to his master. So his talent, we are told, is taken away from him and is given to the one with the ten talents. And then the Gospel reading concludes with this verse. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. I do hope that as we reflect on the story of Jesus, we will recognize that the story is really about our lives and it is a story that we are actually familiar with. On one level, this story does indeed sound like an unfair story about greed, a greedy, wealthy man. But from a spiritual point of view, Jesus is actually offering an important spiritual truth about our own spiritual relationship to God. And I would like in the next few minutes to reflect about fear. I want to suggest that the third servant in the story who did not invest the talent he was given by his master lived in fear. He was afraid of his master and believed that the best he could hope to do was to avoid making mistakes by hiding the talent and returning it untouched. It appears that his anticipation of a kind of punishment from his master he was afraid to risk because he was afraid to lose and therefore he created within himself a consciousness of fear. Now you and I may still know many people who believe in this kind of understanding of a God as a power to be feared. I've come to believe that, fe that fear and love are the primary drivers and controllers of our lives, though in most cases fear seems to take the upper hand. I've experienced that in my own life and I've seen it in the lives of others. I've seen how fear can take hold of us and distort our vision of our lives. We fear our own death and the death of our loved one. We fear coronavirus. We fear the loss of health, security, success, and reputation. We fear failure and what others will think about us. We fear being out of control and powerless. We even fear others. We fear those who look or act or believe differently than us. And the list goes on and on. Each one of you could add to the list. What would you add on this list? What do you fear? If we read the scriptures, we will discover that the most common thing God tells his people is to not be afraid. And yet most of us are. But Jesus is teaching us in the gospel story of today that we are all endowed with infinite talents by virtue of the Christ presence within us. We are here in human form to invest those talents 
to create more abundance, more happiness, more love, to create, in fact, that which Jesus calls the kingdom of heaven. If we fearfully refuse to believe in our talents or to risk sharing them with others, we will fail in our spiritual purpose. And our life experiences will reflect the negative and fear-based beliefs that we approach them. So for those who have a consciousness of talent and worthiness and a loving willingness to invest in our shared experience, more abundance and joy will be created. To those whose defining belief is a fear of lack or inadequacy, that fear will draw to them exactly the negative beliefs they fear, and the result will inevitably be that as Job of the Old Testament discovers when he says, that which greatly I fear has come upon me. Fear or love often determines the choice we make. It determines the words we say. It also determines the action we take. So if we place our belief in a fear of loss, then loss is what we create. If on the other hand we accept our skills and talents as a gift, if we lovingly invest our gifts and energies to bring more of God's abundance into expression, then we will equally experience God's abundance as a result. So this is not a question of judgment, it's all about consciousness, a loving consciousness by virtue of Christ's presence within us. Amen.
Let us pray. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious. Be with those who care for the sick and lift up all who are feeling low, that we may find comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Loving God, we pray for the Church throughout the world, for justice and peace between and within nations, for political leaders and all in authority, for the communities in which we live, for people who suffer in any way, and for all those who are on our minds today. Let us be grateful for the modern methods of technology and communication that enable churches everywhere to provide spiritual support to those who are unable to worship in a church building. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, help us to respond to the needs of all people with as much love and support as we apply to our own needs. Help us to love with all our hearts and with all our souls and with all our minds and to love our neighbours as ourselves. We thank you for our families and friends and for the technology which enables us to hear and see so easily and keep in touch, even though separated by great distances and denied the opportunity to see them because of restrictions imposed by the pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for all who have little love in their lives. For those who are lonely and afraid, those who are addicted and trapped, those who grieve and mourn, for those whose relationships are suffering due to the pressure of these unprecedented times. We pray for those who love the wrong things, those who allow money or possessions to dominate their actions and where greed has taken over, those who love only for gaining the approval of others, flattery or power, those who can only love themselves and where bitterness or hurt has made them inward looking. May the presence of your love in all our lives enable us to appreciate good health, a loving family, food on our table and a purpose in everything we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, as autumn arrives, may the earlier setting of the sun remind us to take time to rest. May the brilliant and changing colours of the leaves remind us of the wonder of your creation. Lord God, as we come before you to give thanks for you providing us with so much to enjoy in your world, Open our eyes to see all the beauty around us and may we be mindful to treat our world with care and respect. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those who are sick, especially those who are suffering from a long-term illness that demands much patience to bear. Especially we pray for Kate James, who is recovering from surgery. We also remember before those who are lonely and depressed and pray that we may be good listeners. Give us the right words and help us to know that simple acts of kindness may help someone else. Hear our prayer, Lord, for those who are old. Our thoughts are especially with those who have become frail and weak, those whose eyesight is failing, those who find it difficult to hear. We think of the lonely, with many memories and few friends to fill the long hours of the day, those who must have things done for them when they wish so much 
that they could still do them themselves. Those who were housebound or living in hospitals or care homes. We pray for those who care for them. We pray that our, we ourselves may never neglect an opportunity to offer friendship and help. Teach us to be watchful for their needs and patience with their frailty, loving and serving them as honoured members of your family. Comfort with your presence those who suffer in body, mind or spirit and give them courage and hope in their troubles. We remember before you those who have died, those who have anniversaries fall at this time. Give strength to those who are left to grieve and help us to share in each other's sorrow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, as we face this coming week, make us mindful that we should constantly pray for your world and your people and share your love with everyone we meet. Merciful God, Accept our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Let us now pray for God's blessing. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. May the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen.